Thomas and the Toy Shop. It was a bright, crisp winter's day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were hard at work carrying passengers and freight. Thomas was very excited. He had a special job to do. The toy shop was to have a grand opening for the winter holiday season. The workers at the toy factory had worked hard to make lots and lots of toys in time for the grand opening. Thomas's job was to take the toys from the factory to the toy shop. It was hard work, but Thomas was enjoying it. He felt really useful doing something so important. And he was looking forward to seeing the children's happy faces. On the day of the grand opening, the Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. A new machine for the toy factory has arrived, he said. Henry, I want you to pick it up from Brendam Docks and take it to the factory as soon as possible. And while you are there, he added, you can take the last load of toys from the factory to the toy shop. Thomas was disappointed. He thought that was his job. Maybe he could pick the children up after school and take them to the grand opening. But the Fat Controller gave that job to Emily. You are to do other jobs today, he told Thomas. Thomas hurried off to start his new jobs. But he was very sad not to be helping with the grand opening. The signal at the next station was red. Thomas stopped. The station master was waiting for him with a message. It was from the Fat Controller. Emily has broken down, said the station master. You must get all your jobs done as quickly as possible. Then you are to collect the children after school and take them to the toy shop. Thomas was sad for Emily, but excited to take the children. He puffed away quickly. There was a lot to do. Thomas was happy to be helping with the grand opening after all. He almost burst his boiler as he puffed around the island. At last, Thomas finished his job. He picked up Annie and Clarabelle and steamed off to collect the children. Thomas puffed through the docks. He was surprised to see Henry was still there. Then, Thomas saw that Henry was trapped by a large crate. What happened, Cranky? asked Thomas. That crate slipped off my hook, snapped Cranky crankily. Thomas was worried. Henry still had to collect the last load of toys from the factory for the toy shop. What if the toys arrive late for the grand opening, wished Thomas. The children will be very disappointed. I'll go as soon as the line's clear, huffed Henry. I know, puffed Thomas excitedly. I can collect the toys from the factory, then I'll pick up the children. You won't be able to pull all the trucks of toys as well as Annie and Clarabel, said Henry. Don't worry, Thomas whistled. I can do it. And he puffed quickly away. There was very little time left before the grand opening. Got to hurry, got to hurry, puffed Thomas. Doing our best, doing our best, chanted Annie and Clarabel. At last, Thomas reached the toy factory. He was coupled up to a long train of trucks and he set off for the toy shop. Thomas had been working hard all day and he wasn't used to pulling such a heavy load. It's very hard work, he puffed. You can do it, you can do it, sang Annie and Clarabelle. Soon Thomas was steaming up Gordon's Hill. Must get to the top, must get to the top, he huffed. But he went slower and slower and slower. Until eventually he stopped altogether. I have to go on, wished Thomas, but he wasn't strong enough. 
the train started to pull Thomas backwards down the hill. He applied his brakes, but it didn't help. He slid all the way to the bottom. Thomas was very upset. I've let everyone down, he puffed sadly, especially the children. Just then he heard another engine coming. It was Henry. The workman had cleared the line at the docks. What's the matter, Thomas? Henry asked. Thomas told him. You were right, Henry, he said unhappily. This load was too heavy for me. I should have listened to you. And now I know I need your help. What can I do? chuffed Henry. You take the trucks to the toy shop, whistled Thomas. And I'll pick up the children. But we must hurry. Henry chuffed as fast as he could to the toy shop. Thomas puffed around the island as fast as he could. The children cheered when they saw him coming. You won't be late, he whistled as he steamed from station to station. And they weren't. Thomas arrived just in time for the grand opening. It was a magical sight. There were coloured lights, balloons and lots and lots of toys. The Fat Controller declared the toy shop open for the winter holiday season. Everybody cheered. Thomas was so pleased to see the children's happy faces. You were right, Henry, Thomas tooted. In future, I shall leave pulling the heavy trucks to you. The Magic Lamp Narrow gauge engines work very hard. They puff and chuff all day up and down the hills. One day the winding gear that carried coal trucks up and down the incline broke. The engines had to work extra hard, pulling heavy coal trucks up and down the long, steep track. Until, at the end of the day, they could ease their aching axles. That evening, Thomas puffed into the transfer yard. All the narrow-gauge engines were there. Thomas was delivering steel winches and wires to repair the broken incline. Listen, Thomas, hooted Rusty. Scarlo is telling us a story from the hills. Long, long ago, began Scarlowy, there was an old engine called Proteus. His lamp was so bright you could see it for miles around. Proteus said it was a magic lamp. He promised that if any engine ever found a lamp, their wishes would come true. How would you know it was Proteus's lamp? asked Duncan. First you feel a rush of wind whenever the lamp is near, Scarlowy chuffed quietly. Then you hear a strange creaking sound. And finally, he added, you'll see it flicker on and off, off and on. Peter Sam huffed loudly. I don't believe there's a magic lamp. Soon all the steel winches and wires were loaded into Peter Sam's trucks. I have work to do, huffed Peter Sam. I'm a really useful engine, not a really silly one. The incline must be working by morning, so I won't be wasting my time looking for a silly magic lamp, he tooted proudly, and he steamed quickly away. The moon was bright. Peter Sam huffed and puffed. The magic lamp I know isn't true. It's just an old story and quite silly too. Peter Sam clickety-clacked towards a junction. Suddenly, he felt a great rush of wind. His axles rattled and his couplings creaked. What's happening? Peter Sam whistled. He was so surprised he puffed right past the junction. 
and up the wrong line away from the incline. Peter Sam still didn't believe Scar Lowy's story about Proteus' magic lamp. But then he heard a creaking sound and his wheels began to wobble. Up ahead, a light flickered off and on, on and off. Then he saw it. It was just the Fogman's lantern. It creaked and croaked as it swung outside his cabin. Peter Sam felt better. He chuffed past. Peter Sam was now even further away from the incline. The magic lamp I know isn't true. It's just an old story. I'm quite silly too. He huffed quietly to himself. Then suddenly, there was another rush of wind. Then a creaking sound. And finally, a flickering light. On and off, off and on. The wind, the creaking sound, and the flickering light. Could it be Proteus's lamp? Thought Peter Sam. Then he saw it. It wasn't Proteus's lamp. It was the light from a bonfire at the children's campsite. And it was the trees that were creaking in the wind. I knew that all along, sighed Peter Sam. But now he chuffed on even more slowly. Peter Sam was now at the bottom of a steep hill. And now he was completely lost. He didn't know what to do. I wish I could find the incline, and I wish I could be safe at home in the sheds with the other engines. And I wish, Peter Sam puffed quietly, I wish I could find Proteus's lamp. Perhaps then my wishes would come true. Suddenly he felt a rush of wind whip around his wheels. Then he heard the strangest creaking, croaking sound. And then he saw a flickering light that flashed on and off, off and on. It came from the top of the hill. Peter Sam gasped. It must be Proteus's magic lamp. He knew he had to go up the hill and find it. The wind whirred and stirred. The sound became a whooshing and a wheeshing, and the light flickered brighter and brighter. Peter Sam puffed to the top of the hill. And there was Harold the helicopter. His blades made a wind that whirred and stirred. The sound whooshed and whooshed as the blades spun round. And Harold's bright light flickered on and off, off and on. Peter Sam was very surprised. Harold, he gasped. Hello, hummed Harold. I was dropping off some packages for the hill farms. What are you doing? I'm lost, Peter Sam said, and I'm going to be very late to deliver the winches and wires to the incline. No problem, old chap. I'll show you the way. And Harold took to the air. His strong light shone brightly and showed Peter Sam the right way to the incline. Later, on his way home, Peter Sam couldn't stop thinking about what had happened. Maybe, puffed Peter Sam quietly, you don't have to see the magic lamp for your wishes to come true. Maybe it's enough just to believe in it. Thomas's New Trucks It was a busy, bustling day on the island of Sodor. The engines and their trucks were working very hard. Thomas was shunting trucks in the yard, but his trucks were old and rusty. It was very hard work. Then James arrived. Look, James puffed proudly. The fat controller gave me some smart new trucks. They're much nicer than yours. It's not fair moaned Thomas. I want new trucks too. The next morning, the Fat Controller had a surprise for Thomas. Thomas, your trucks are getting too old for your heavy loads. You are to have some new ones, just like James. Thomas was delighted. 
Thomas collected his new trucks and puffed proudly away. But when Thomas arrived at the docks, there was James. He was showing his new trucks to Bill and Ben. I've got new trucks too, puffed Thomas. They're even nicer than James's, puffed Bill and Ben. Your trucks might be nice and new now, huffed James, but you'll never keep your trucks as clean as mine. Yes, I will, chuffed Thomas. I'll have the cleanest trucks on the island. James watched Thomas puff away. The next day, Thomas puffed into the quarry. James's trucks were already loaded. I've got my stone all ready, boasted James, and not a spot of quarry dust on me. I can do that too, pouted Thomas. So Thomas backed under the hopper, but just as the stone was released, Thomas's trucks chuckled. Then they rolled a bit more. Bother, huffed Thomas. Ha, puffed James. Your trucks don't look so new now. Thomas was cross. Thomas puffed to the coaling plant. This time, behave yourselves. Thomas snapped to his trucks. I want you to stay clean. When he arrived, Thomas backed carefully and slowly under the coal hopper. But the trucks chuckled then rolled too far again. Thomas and his trucks were dirtier than ever. Later, when Thomas arrived at the washdown, there was James. See, I have got the cleanest trucks. You'll be here for hours getting yours cleaned, laughed James. Thomas was very cross. The next morning, when Thomas puffed into the yard, he had an idea. If I use my old trucks to take the coal, he puffed, my new trucks will still look clean and new. So Thomas backed up to collect his old trucks. He collected some coal from the coaling plant. Then he raced across the countryside. Ha! laughed Thomas. I can get these trucks really messy and get the coal to the docks on time. Then there was trouble. The rusty coupling broke. Thomas's trucks were rolling by themselves. Cinders and ashes! cried Thomas. Thomas applied his brakes, but he stopped too quickly. The trucks bumped into the back of Thomas and the coal spilled all over the tracks. Thomas was stuck. Soon the fat controller arrived on Harvey. Thomas, these trucks are too old for pulling coal, the fat controller said sternly. And now you have caused confusion and delay. Sorry, sir, said Thomas. Harvey and the workmen soon cleared the tracks. But Thomas still had to deliver the coal to the docks. So he raced back to the shunting yards. And this time he collected his smart new trucks. Harvey and the workmen loaded the coal into Thomas's trucks. Their new trucks were soon filthy, but they were filled with coal and ready to go, and they were very happy. Thomas raced to the docks. Suddenly the trucks weren't being troublesome. They rolled easily up hills, they rattled quickly down hills, and they sang all the way. Thomas raced into the docks. 
We need to unload quickly, the dock manager called. But don't worry, we'll try and keep your new trucks clean. That's okay, puffed Thomas. My trucks would rather be useful than clean. Just then, James puffed into the docks. Look at your trucks, boasted James. Filthy again, not like mine. James tried to pull away, but his troublesome trucks didn't want to be clean anymore. Hold back, hold back, they chuckled. Just then, Cranky's cable snapped. He dropped a large crate of melons. Bother, huffed James. James, tutored Thomas. I think trucks like to be useful rather than clean. And all the trucks agreed.